He has some sort of Italian food, and then what does he say about it? It's like a something about a meatball. A spicy meatball. Spicy spicy meatball. Oh, we got him to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that somehow we could get chaps to organically say that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> Just really worked that's it in organically. That's a spicy meatball. Oh. <laughs> Brunch. Hit it, boys. I saved a life recently. How so? I helped a stranger. Their battery was dead, and they needed uh, they needed a jump. Oh, yeah? And I said, hey, you've come to the right place. I'll do it. That seems like a very not you thing to do. Seems like a very not person thing to do. That's If, if we're told anything in our lives, it's if a stranger comes up to you and needs something, fuck, especially if you're in a car... Drive away from that person. Yes. Or just tase them. Do anything that you can to protect yourself mm. because that person wants to kill you. Yeah. I was uh, sitting in my car. I had just seen a movie. And then I went to the mall. And then I was hungry. So I went to Chick-fil-A. Mm. And I was it's like, very, you know uh, what? I'm going to sit in my car and eat Chick-fil-A. It's not a good look. Like just being like a man sitting in your car. It's better to be on the move. and Chick-fil-A, good restaurant, but uh, problematic. They are very homophobic. Yes. Um, so I know. Way to go. I'm very sorry. Very off yes. brand. Uh, so I was sitting in my car. I I drove. Um, there was a strip. It was like a, the Chick Fil A was near a strip mall. Okay. So I just drove to a part of the parking lot where there was nothing going on. Just me by myself. <laughs> that is just, very sad. I was like, I'm just gonna bang out this sandwich right quick. We talk. Uh, we talk a lot about doing things on our own. Mm-hmm. Like we're not afraid to go to to shows by mm-hmm. ourselves, movies by ourselves. Eating by yourself That's is, by far the most embarrassing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I've I've heard people older than me say that that's something that I might come around on, that it's it's a very enjoyable thing. Because that just means that you – but if you come around on something as you get older, it just means that you give less of a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it always makes me sad yeah. as a third party to see somebody eating by themselves. Like I want to invite them over to just join us. Because, Saddest moment – go ahead. Because – Eating a meal is a social thing, mm-hmm. um, whereas going to a concert, going to a movie, like you're shutting up and you're watching something anyway. So it's not really a social event. Eating, I feel like there's way more potential for it to be a social event. Yeah. Uh, saddest moment of my life, other than most of the moments of my life, was uh, one Christmas Eve. We were – my family – For some reason, we picked up food from a restaurant, and that was going to be the thing. We were going to go home, eat the food from the restaurant, play some games. I don't know. Whatever you do on Christmas Eve. I don't even fucking remember. Uh, But we went in to pick it up. It was me, my dad, and one of my sisters, and we're going to pick up the food, and an old guy goes up to the hostess and says... Just they said, "Are you waiting for anybody?" And he said, "No, just one." Ugh. And she sat him on Christmas Eve. This guy went to it was like the ground oh, around no. or some shit like I'm that. I'm gonna cry right now. I was, I. There's nothing sadder than an old person eating by themselves. There's nothing sadder than an old person doing most things by themselves. Like if it's like <laughs> old man gets a hole in one, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like. It, it, a, a, an old couple eating. There's nothing cuter than an old That's, couple eating yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. And, and you take away one of those people, mm-hmm. and it immediately becomes the saddest thing ever. Yeah. Because so, my mind always jumps to, ooh, that person had somebody that they loved, and they died. Yes. And now they have to eat alone every meal. Right. When <laughs> in reality, so he uh, and he, that old guy and his wife just got in a big fight. So he's blowing off some steam, and then he's going to go back and have awesome makeup sex. Oh, and we're like, oh, this poor guy. Uh, but I remember telling, I said I was like, we've got to bring that guy over for Christmas Eve. And again, it's like, no. <laughs> It's almost more insulting to be like, hey, you look really sad. Right. You want to join our party? Hey, no. couldn't help but see the way your whole thing looks. <laughs> but it's also like there's a very strong uh, possibility of you just looking even worse when you ask him to come sit with you and then he says no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that guy who looks like the saddest person in the world doesn't want He's anything good. to do with your yeah. situation. Um, so I'm sitting in my car eating and uh, again, I like I know I almost didn't want to share that part because that is 
that's like a really bad sad thing and i knew as i was doing it i was having a good day and everything but i was like this i I would hate if someone saw me took a picture or whatever like my career is (laughs) over so eating alone is sad eating alone in your car is eating alone in your car in a parking lot is the sadder version of that especially when in hindsight because i thought that i was gonna eat it on the road and that's fine i was like i could have just if i was gonna sit and eat i was thinking this i was like if i was gonna sit and eat I could have just fucking gone in to right. Chick Fil A and done it in there, gone into there where they're fucking playing their their anti gay music or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the inside of a Chick Fil A is like, but they, uh, they can't pl- be good. They play the alternate version of Boys Club, which is Girls Club. Yes, they uh, play Girls and Boys Club. Well, no, they just change the lyrics a little bit to uh, like put in their message. So uh, it's not it's not about gay sex. They make it so it's about. Like the Boys and Girls Club, like a fucking YMCA type thing, which is also gay, so joke's on them. <laughs> um, but I'm sitting there, and uh, this guy's walking over to my car, and I look up, and as I see he's walking over to my car, he's too close for me to react to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting there, and a the guy's like almost at my car, so instinctively, I my arm goes to the controls, and I roll down the window. Instead of locking it, because I was like, this guy's just t- like if this guy has come here to kill me, he's snuck up well enough that he deserves the kill. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Because if I lock the door, like he'd be able to be like, "What the fuck, man, bro? You really just lock the door?" Yeah. And then I'm like, "You got to do that shit. You got to spot that him like 50 feet away and then lock it immediately." I need to have plausible deniability if he if he claims to hear the locking. I'd be like, dude, you were way too far away. There's no way you heard me lock. Yeah. This was it was locked the whole time. I always get in my car and eat a chicken you gotta, sandwich and lock. You the gotta door. lock it before he gets in the red zone. Right. So I roll down the window and the guy's like, "Hey man, uh, my car is right over there. Can you give me a jump?" And this is, f- I'm flustered for a lot of reasons. A, I'm talking to a stranger and my parents aren't there, and B. I don't know how to fucking jump a car. You really? Like the the I once everything's taken out, I know what to do. But just the, yeah, like I don't I don't think that I had ever uh, done that with a stranger before. Like helped them start their car like that. Interesting. Have you? Yeah, I've jumped jumped a car before. Well, I. But it was probably a friend. Uh, yes. Yeah. But also, um, I had a piece of shit car in high school, so I had to jump my car like every other week. Oh. And so I got very acclimated with the process of jumping a car. So that's good though. That's life lessons. Yeah. Um, so I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I drove over to his car. We were the only two cars for like a mile. That's if that scary as but fuck. I, for some, it was weird. Like I just was not scared. I knew I knew I should be scared, and I was like, I don't know if jump. For some reason, jumping a car didn't seem like a way for someone to scam me. Like, what am I gonna do? Like, pop my fucking hood, and he fucking rips out the the <laughs> guzzler, or I don't know what the fucking the the terms of the car. Like, he just fucking like takes something out, and he's like, "Bitch, got your car," and then drives away. And I'm like, "Fuck!" Now my car is useless. Um, I just didn't. I just love that you think that the guzzler is a part of a car. No, it's fucking having comedic timing. No, I, I know, knew I that. Bet. I was like, names say something that sounds like it would be a part of the car, but is not. It's called being fucking funny. Uh, I'll, so I'll try it sometime. The, I suppose so. So uh, you just you blew up that fucking joke. That was going to be up. someone's favorite part of the podcast. No, I think that it was. That's why I thought it was hilarious. I wanted to bring more attention to it. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, so I popped the hood. We're fucking putting the wires to the right places. We're doing it. Uh, he starts the car. It there's like the struggle of the car wanting to start, and it did it, and it was great. And he was like, "Thank you so much." Hey, I work at. Uh, I forget where you work. You worked at a restaurant nearby. Chick Fil A. He was like, "No." He was very homophobic. Right? Yeah. He was like, "Oh, thank you so much. You're not gay, right?" <laughs> um, he was like, uh, do you want – I don't know what he said. He was like, hey, uh, anytime you come to that restaurant, ask for me. And I was like, mm, what the fuck's that going to do? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> hey, is, uh, is Jack here? He said yeah, yes. Yes. Oh, cool. Good to know. 
What's the rest of his week like? I don't know. <laughs> well, he d- he d- he said to ask for me, but he didn't specify what to do after that. Hmm. I d- I remember I did that one time. I thought it would be funny, and it just was lame. Someone's uh, away message was like, "Call the cell." So I called their cell, and they were like, "Hello," and I was like, "Hey, you set to call?" Just good at following instructions. Yeah, and he was like, "Real fucking funny, man." <laughs> I guess you're gonna tell people how you did this, huh? <laughs> Um, so anyway, he was like, and that was the last friend you ever had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was like, yeah, just ask, ask for Will. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. Um, but he was like, thanks so much, man. Like I, I called AAA and they said to do this or whatever, but it didn't work. And something's wrong with this fucking car, man. It's new. It shouldn't be doing this and all this stuff. And he was like, but thanks, man. Uh, are you a uh, Christian? And I was he like, really dropped yeah, that? he asked if I was a Christian, but just because like it was the Christian thing to do to, to help him. And uh, that would have made me very uncomfortable. I was like, no, no, no. You see, it was because I was eating a sandwich by myself, and I was distracted by that. And then when I looked up, you were too close. So when <laughs> yes. I reached for the console, and I gave him like the whole fucking bit. <laughs> no, man, yeah. you don't understand. Uh, I was going to lock you up, but I was too slow. Yeah, right. Just fucking. I'm not a Christian. I'm a slowpoke. <laughs> 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 um, so he was like, "Are you a Christian?" And I was like, uh, "I was when I was younger. I was kind of raised on it, and then I'm 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 actually woke." So, uh, sorry. And he was like, oh, well, I, I hope that you become a Christian again. And that was kind of it. And he, he said, God bless you and everything. And I was like, nah, again, don't need it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, but that was the it's fucking... A little, it's a little too much religion and a car jumping experience. Well, it sucked me. because I'd made the guy's day in so many ways. And he was like, all right, just one last little test. Are you a disappointment to me? <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> so. All right, how, let's help. You fixed my car, let's fix you. Yeah. Is, no, I'm good. It sucked. But it was like we had done so well up to that point. Mm. But I was glad. Like, I'm, I'm better for the experience. Like, I'm not a Christian, but I think people people mistake me for one now. Oh, that's the best that you can hope for. Because I'm just fucking helping strangers. So it was a great fucking time. Congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, this is the third annual Hot Guys and Weathermen episode we are quite excited for it, as you can probably see from the title. Our guest is Chaps. Chaps from Barstool. Uncle Chaps. We'd wanted to have him for a while, but we'd never even discussed having Actually, him. Actually, our listeners have wanted us to have him for a while. Yeah. He, we don't get a lot of guest Collab su- requests. Yes, yeah. ge- guest uh, suggestions from our listeners, but Chaps is for sure one of the most requested guests. That's because he, ju- he just fits this. Yeah. Uh, like, I... He's my favorite writer on Barstool. He's, uh, I just, I laugh at everything that guy He's does. He's great. Um, do you want to give a little background on to what ba- uh, Hawkeyes and Weathermen is about? Oh, right. We should, in case you're a new listener. Yes. So, uh, one of our first episodes was called Hot Guys and Weathermen. It featured John Feidelberg, mm-hmm. and we just discussed which, it was really the the beginning of this podcast, kind of becoming this podcast. We, You and I were at a bar one night. And uh, we were talking about guys that we thought were hot, and we were like, we should th- we should just do an episode about this because guys definitely discuss which guys are hot, and um, for whatever re- like just if, if you're new to this podcast, we're like the ultimate not we're not fucking bros. So if you like a. Uh, if you're like a fucking uh, like no homo blah blah, we're not for you. Yes. Um. A like fuck you if you do say stuff like that, but also like. That's just that's just not us. That's that's not our style. So um, we want to have an episode where we just very casually talked about which men we thought were very attractive. Yes, uh, guys often objectify women, so we decided that we would objectify men and yeah. discuss them uh, very uh, shallowly and kind of. Yeah. Th- this episode, I feel like we got more into personality based stuff. That's because Chaps is a good person mm. and sees into the soul, mm-hmm. and he made his list based off of that. But, um, yeah, I, I think uh, a big – I will say the culture has changed a little bit since the first time that we did uh, one of the Hot Guys and Weatherman episodes. Like, I think back when we did the first one – Well, Feidelberg was, was – Feidelberg wanted to bang these guys and never see him again. <laughs> yes. No, but I'll say uh, 
the like the general culture surrounding uh, guys talking about other guys has gotten better. Oh yeah. Like once we started doing it, but I think that we're we actually wanted, a big part of that. We wanted. That's why we. Yeah. A big part of it was we wanted to kind of say, hey, it's okay for a straight guy to talk about uh, a guy and say that he is really, really attractive. In fact, it's way weirder for a straight guy to pretend that he's to, not attracted yes. to other men. Weirdest fucking thing in the world. And I think that like Feidelberg said that right off the bat when like we having to go through life pretending that you're you never find another guy attractive is probably one of the worst experiences and ever. It's so fucking. Why would you ever weird. live your life that way? And like, what do you do all day then? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we wanted to we wanted to open up the discussion about mm -hmm. uh, guys on guys, and it was very very passionate. A lot of oh, yeah. argument, uh, a lot of arguments. Um, for example, the the big one that we all were dwelling on was Tom Brady. Yeah, that uh, I think the Tom emotions Brady. get in the way too much when people talk about Tom Brady's looks. I think that he's fine, but he's politician hot. Uh, and then the big one, the one that gave the the episode its name, was Colin Jost. Girls love Colin Jost, and uh, he's just it. okay. He's an he's a cutish guy mm -hmm. who usually wears a suit, and that's fucking fine. But that does not get you on the fucking list. Great if you like a guy with one lip. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, so I think uh, you know we've we've. This wasn't a weatherman heavy episode, but mm. we uh, we got we got there a little bit, um, and we did. There was some good debate. Yeah, and we we got a, we've gotten a ton of mileage out of the Colin Jost thing, uh, which was brought up this week by a listener. Yeah, uh, that <laughs> I we never could have imagined that we got so much mileage out of the Colin Jost thing, and it's because everybody keeps giving him credit for being handsome. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh God. Uh, anyway, without further ado, oh uh, so. After, so we're going to get to Chaps, and then after a uh, big part of this episode is we are going to have our first uh, annual Brunches Handsomest Man of the Year award. So uh, we're going to have Chaps, and then we're going to have the Handsomest Man of the Year join us for that presentation. Uh, before we get to Chaps, we have a little quick word from our sponsors. Holiday cash. You need it, and I know where to get it. My bookie is the place to score serious cash on your sports predictions. Believe it or not, the holidays are just around the corner. And while that means plenty of parties, gifts, and spending, it also means there's lots of football, basketball, and hockey games on which you can score big every day. Gender up and play like the pros on game day. You can play the money line, side, or total. My bookie is your hookup for all your betting needs and offers super fast payouts when you win. Where you bet is just as important as person or team on whom you're betting and if you want to make money betting games you got to go to mybookie.ag they're the only site i'd recommend i trust them but you don't have to take my word for it check them out yourself they have odds on every matchup and a mobile site that makes wagering on your smartphone a breeze join now and my bookie will match your my deposit bookie. with up to a 50 percent bonus use promo code c l n s to activate offer Visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win, you get paid on mybookie. Mybookie. Also, uh, use promo code BRUNCH when you play DraftKings. Very important on that front as well. Yes. Uh, sign up, use promo code BRUNCH. Boom. Let's Money's. get to the Hot Guy discussion. Our third panel member for Hot Guys 3, Return of the Guys, is a very handsome man. Chaps. Chaps, how are you? I'm doing great, friends. How are you guys? Just wonderful. You are, uh, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing that you are the first and only person discussed uh, for this panel job for this episode. It really was. You were the only only person. We were like, should we try chaps? Yes. I'm very happy to hear that. I'm, I'm glad to be on with you guys. I love talking handsome. Yeah, right. that's well, that's that was the line of thinking. It was you're basically uh, the resident handsome person at Barstool. Yeah, like I've pre I've pretty much like reversed eight miles myself where instead of people calling me ugly, I called everybody else handsome, and so that reciprocated back to me. And now if I post like a selfie, like my friend, my real life friends who follow me on Instagram are like, two hundred dudes just tell you that you're handsome. <laughs> it's a fucking brilliant move. So like, let's get a little uh, feel for your palate. Um, so we've discussed. A lot of guys on here. Idris Elba is a favorite over here. John Hamm is a is a big one for me. Uh, give me a few of your guys so we can know kind of what we're dealing with. All right. So I'm not 
just going to go on looks alone for handsome because I feel like my wife is way out of my league, but she considers me to be handsome in part because I'm a funny dude. I think that plays into it. Like personality can make you more handsome. So my first one's probably going to catch you by surprise. It's Mr. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais is my first level of handsome. Wow. That is one way to set the palette. <laughs> I think partly because his laugh is adorable. And when yes. you set, when you set the stage and have an adorable laugh, it can really affect how people perceive your looks. And I think Ricky does it. Now, when he does the bathtub pics and all that, he's not that handsome. But when he's just fucking about, he's a pretty good looking dude. You know what's a really cute thing he does is uh, he'll say something, do a quick little giggle, and then say, not really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there's one, there's one scene with him and with Louis C.K. May he rest in peace. So <laughs> Louis C.K. is in with his doctor, and it's Ricky Gervais. Oh, my God, yes. And where he's like, your, your penis looks like chewed bubble gum like oh. a dog took it off and shoot it for a little bit and ricky is like laughing and giggling the whole time it's one it's probably the hardest i've ever laughed at any tv show of my life and the climax of that scene was him sticking his finger up up louis ass just for fun <laughs> yeah which looking back on it now is probably a little problematic yes uh if you think that the laugh sets the tone what do you think of larry david larry david for an older gentleman i would consider him Super Silver Fox level because he's he's like pretty old. He's kind of out of my league. But speaking of Silver Foxes, my next one on the list would be Anderson Cooper. He's very Ooh, handsome. Well, yeah, he's a big I don't think we've brought him up before, but he is very, very so, handsome. Yeah, just very clean, very – yeah, he's got I don't know all. if I've ever voiced this, but uh, I one of my bucket list goals in life is to be – Oh yeah, for sure. Well, like you, so you you referred to Larry David as a silver fox. He can pull off silver fox without being even the silver because he's so fucking bald now. Right. Um, the he's Anderson not even a silver Cooper's, fox either. He's a white fox. Yes, his hair is very white. Yeah, yeah. But Anderson Cooper, yeah, you're, you, there's no complaints from me. Another one that I have just to set the table a little bit would be John Mayer. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anybody who can sing, if you're like slightly handsome, if you're like a seven and you can sing and play guitar, you're like a ten. Oh, absolutely. I mean, fucking Ed Sheeran, yeah. I think, is uh, tens like across a, the board, and he's the three. ugliest. <laughs> he's like the hardest person on the eyes ever. His tattoos are junk. Yeah. His yeah, just there's nothing there. But then once he fucking starts singing and rapping, God, give me it all. Love it. Man, I went to an Ed Sheeran concert a few months ago. Did you know that he makes all the music himself? Like everything. He doesn't have a band. He doesn't have. Oh yeah, anything. like the, yeah, like the loop pedal. Yeah, he he does that uh, one man band type. Thing I didn't know stuff. that. And when I went, I was like, "What the fuck is happening right now?" Like my wife was because she knew that I didn't know it, and she was watching me watch him, and I wanted to fuck him like on stage. Like, <laughs> if you can loop pedal good, I'm yeah. coming to get them guts. Here's the issue though: if you can loop pe- pedal good, it's it's awesome. But if you do it for every fucking song, then like it takes nine minutes to start every song because you have to layer everything. You have to like put down the percussion, then you have to put down the bass, then you have to put down the guitar and everything. And That's like true. the first time you see it, you're like, holy shit, this is so cool. And then you're like, he just started my favorite song. I should go get a beer. So by the time I get back, <laughs> he's actually playing my favorite song. It's also like uh, we already know that Ed Sheeran is an incredible musician. Mm. So for him to just do that, it's like, all right, all right, you. bud, we get it. <laughs> yeah. So I think it might be like you were saying, he kind of has to make up for his looks. Yeah. So he's like, here's this incredible shit that I can do. And he just pounds it into your brain. I loved here that this, this will really do it for you, chaps. Uh, for one week, uh, John Mayer sat in for, I think it was David Letterman. Yeah. And uh, the musical guest. Oh, no, I think it was Seth Meyers. uh, I don't know. One of those guys. Uh, And the musical guest was Ed Sheeran. And they played Don't together. And it was terrific. Wow. And And I think think with the the 27-minute long thing, I think that's like what Dave Matthews does. So I feel like if you have that, Dave Matthews underrated handsome guy, too. Ooh. Dave Matthews, I don't know. Dave Matthews... uh, He's always got like a scowl about him. Not Dave understand. Matthews like now, but be... Dave Matthews, 1997. Come on. All right, so let's let's start in the news here. Uh, I wanted. To, I think I discussed this. I think that Lavar Ball is just very handsome, and no one talks about it because we're too busy talking about whatever the fuck he's doing. It's always something different every day. I think that he's got the most winning smile ever. I've written a column about it for NBC Sports Boston. They decided not to run it, uh, but I think that. 
just when he says something and then he knows like it doesn't necessarily make sense and he kind of wrinkles his face and he makes a, he has a little smile i think it's very 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 endearing i i deduct points because his children are very ugly so right yeah. i think that lavar is better than lonzo for everything i think that lonzo is more annoying than lavar i think that lavar is for sure more handsome than lonzo Lonzo's fucking trash. I think that the Lamar Lonzo's has trash. a better shooting percentage right now. Lonzo's, Lonzo's uh, yeah. trash all around. Yeah. Uh, I also like, they did like one of those things recently. The Lakers were like, who do you get compared uh, the most to? Like a celebrity. And Lonzo was like, Drake. And we were like, who the fuck <laughs> is that? Yeah. Do you have any friends with eyes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate Lonzo's hair. To be a multimillionaire at that young age and not being able to find a quality barber. Yeah. What about uh, Mark Davis? Mark Davis is a multi-billionaire, and he has the worst haircut on the planet. I feel like the rules are different when you obviously wear an adult diaper. Like, I feel like it changes yeah. <laughs> the dynamic a little bit. Just like, and I don't really feel screen. comfortable making fun of people who are obviously on the spectrum. So I think we got to leave Mark you, Davis alone. You both dropped an old person at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, my old person that I think is at the top of my echelon in the past year, Jeff Goldblum. Oh yeah, Jeff Goldblum is yeah, just unbelievable to me, and he he's like looks goals and personality goals. So that's the thing. Jeff Goldblum for some reason needs to be that needs to be clarified though. It's it doesn't go without saying for some reason with him because he's been a punchline for so many years. Like people are fascinated with him. He's got kind of a Bill Murray type thing, except it's more people make laughing at him than with him, and I don't really understand that. I don't think anybody should be laughing at him anymore because no, I think he he's, and he's an intellectual. Has, he's a smart guy. Yes, mm. yes. He's like he's he's like a mystery man. He's yeah. got a lot of layers. He's very uh, he's very distinguished. Yes, and uh, he's just very unapologetically weird, and I love that about. I him. like to think that uh, he rubs his fingers together a lot, like this. Yes, you know, like well, if he, he if he's just like leaning, and, uh, if he's he has waiting, a real like syncopated weight of. Uh, talking yeah about like, <laughs> like he does apartments.com commercials and i'm like huh what does this guy have to say like there's nothing that he could talk about that i would be disinterested in he wasn't that attractive as like a younger he guy wasn't, no. but getting a little bit of gray getting a little bit more wisdom he's added a lot another person in that same category would be barack obama barack obama is oh, oh, yeah. more barack handsome obama. as yeah. the years have gone by and and plus, he's the one who got away. Like, the one yes. who got away gets hotter and hotter oh, in yeah. your mind. You like, you, I'm romanticizing the fuck out of Barack Obama's politics, out of everything with that guy. His appropriate use of, like, a semicolon, you're like, wow. He knows grammar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he, he really is, like, the uh, the one that got away kind of sexy because he only gets hotter. He's He's physically gotten hotter, but he's also gotten more ideal in your head yeah. because you've since gone through some shit after he's left you on uh, the flip side of that can we do flip side of that coin oh, sure. on the downward hill of handsome would be bill clinton which is rare so we should clarify we talk all the time about uh how typically it's like if you're a guy there's a 90 percent chance you're going to get better looking as you age it's not good to be in that other 10 percent because not only are you not go? Everybody else is going up while you're going down. So there's a lot of separation created there very, very quickly. And Bill Clinton is a great call there because he does look he awful. looks terrible. Yeah, he looks terrible. Uh, and a lot of that's because he spent a lot of time outside in Arkansas as a youth. I think we say youth, right? You guys say youth too. So he was in Arkansas as a mm -hmm. youth, getting all kinds of skin cancer. Like he's got all kinds of skin things going on in his face. Yeah, his skin oh. is terrible. Yeah. He's, his nose is very like swollen and red. He just looks very bad. Uh, but what's there's like a point where guys just keep getting more and more handsome as they go on, and then they just become an old person. Yeah, like, we discussed that a couple age? weeks ago. I forget. Uh, I don't think we settled on anything. I think we got distracted and talked about something else. Okay. But, 63. Uh, yeah? 63. Uh, is there, yeah. Is there like a formula Well, for 63 that? is a new 56, by the way. So it Ooh. used to be 56. Well, well okay. now for sure guys are 56 and still hot. Because right. Paul McCartney's like 70, but mm -hmm. he's crossed into adorable. And I like I never can actually no Paul was actually I think that Paul was adorable as a teen and then got handsome and now he's back into adorable. But I think that that's where you want to go. Like that's once once you're timeline. old, once you're old, you want to be adorable. Right. And that's you, where being like a bubble gum pop guy comes into big time benefit, because if you're like a rugged looking dude, like, say, 
a John Hamm. John Hamm's not going to be an adorable old man. He's going to be an yeah. old man who's off the face of the mountain. Jonathan Taylor Thomas, he is going to be an yeah. adorable. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It comes back. Uh, uh, I feel like you were probably adorable as a kid, Pete. Yeah. Were you? Yeah. I I still kind of am adorable because I yeah, look like you are. <laughs> I look like I'm 12. Um, here's one for the age thing. Uh, Gerard Butler always looks like he used to be hot and he's just not anymore. Like, I think that when he was 30, we were like, I bet when he, like, he's having a little rough patch now, but I bet when he was 25, he was a fucking babe. And now that he's like 50, we're like, I bet when he was 30. Gerard Butler seems like the kind of guy who nobody can ever tell his age. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know. I, th- I think 50 is actually a good guess with him. The dude from He's Taken dead. is that way, too, where you think that he was handsome Liam, at one point. The, yes. Yeah. yeah. It was Liam but his, but his head's a little bit too wide. Like, it, like, smashed He's, it down. He's, uh, he's, like, frail, but if you called him frail, he'd be like, no, I'm not. Look, and he'd show you, like, his arms or whatever. You'd be like, all right, fine. I guess you're not frail, but we all there's think you're There's something weird that's not. There's something disproportionate there. I don't think I've ever looked at Liam Neeson and been like, he was. You don't he, sexualize no. Liam Neeson? <laughs> Uh, maybe it's because he's always sad from being like having a family. Well, he's always too fucking him. busy. He's fucking yes. fighting wolves. Chaps, did you see the the wolf fighter movie with Liam Neeson? I did. What'd you think? Not good. Actually, bad. <laughs> was, he, like all that happened was wolves just kept coming and eating his friends, and he was like, "I'll fight the wolves." And then I like, there's like one ten minutes of plot in any Liam Neeson movie. Like it's <laughs> what's going to happen. It's happening, and then it's over. And then he's just kicking people's asses for like, yeah. whether it be wolves, frogs, hours. whatever. Uh, what I like about Liam Neeson movies is it's all about him getting revenge until he gets it. And then it's about the people on whom he got revenge getting revenge on him. And then there's another movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice little cycle, though. It's like a slinky of movies. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great career move because you're never out of work. Uh, like, what are we going to do now? Let's do Take an Eight. <laughs> Oh, we just did a plane. Uh, let's put him on a train now. Yes, yeah. yes. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, and the barely legal division, uh, I have Sean Mendez. I have Sean Mendez as a fuck off because really? he is not. Sean Mendez looks like a fucking. I, what did I write down? I have it right here. I have a note about Sean Mendez. It is. Uh, I don't think Sean Mendez is hot. <laughs> looks like a kid. Grow up! Exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> That's a good note. I, yeah, I think that he is. Uh, he's developing more manly features, but he's like for sure in the young man's division. But it's uh like for some people, I think like casting directors, like or like people like Allison Jones or whatever, they've got some fucking gift where they can look at a child, and it's like a sick gift. But they can like, look at a child and I be know like, he's going to be hot. They're going to be smoking hot, like they like Bieber. How did anybody, like? Bieber was a cute kid, yeah. but I don't think anybody would have predicted that Bieber would grow up into, like, the handsome person that he is. He should be in a category of his own where it's like he is so handsome that he was tired of handsome, so he started dyeing his hair blonde to not be handsome, and it's still, like, like we got that. more handsome. Chaps, you yes. know, we, we actually have Bullshit. a term for that. Uh, it's called the hot tub effect because when – you, you know when you're in a hot tub and the water's warm and then it doesn't feel so warm anymore because you've been there for so long? Mm-hmm. So you get out, you jump in the pool, that feels really cold, and then you get back in the hot tub, all of a sudden, hot again. Mm-hmm. So the trick is you make yourself ugly for a little bit just so people can kind of forget that you're hot. And then when you make yourself hot again, it's like you're a brand new hot, even though you just look the way you looked before. You know who the king of that it's is? It's a very common trick. Brad Pitt is the king Ooh. of that. Ooh, Brad, Pitt Brad Pitt's is the not king of like having like pretty bad haircuts and then he'll come back with like a fire haircut actually, and like holy shit you know who actually is the king of that tom brady tom oh. brady just gets a bad haircut like every other year well tom brady tom brady did the hot tub effect where he spent the first like 26 years of his life in the pool <laughs> never right. got in the hot tub and then once he got in the hot tub he had some fucking thing he had like an automatic thing that raises the degrees every time it it feels like it's maybe not so hot anymore so it's always fucking sizzling with that guy he went 11 and 5 and became a great quarterback and was like you know what i need to look like one too yes although uh i think we said on the first one that my favorite move that tom brady has ever done was uh doing the jake Plummer look right after jake Plummer did the jake Plummer look Mm. and everyone jake Plummer did it everyone was like gross fucking suck terrible signing and then when tom brady did it everyone was like man 
He's like a football player and a model. <laughs> <laughs> Tough break for Jake Plummer, <laughs> as usual. Uh, in the athlete uh, discussion, we have to talk about, we've been yelled at this a few times. Uh, we have not brought up Olivier Giroud who is a soccer player for Arsenal. I was going to say, fucking help me out. Olivier I was like, Giroud I hope he's not a, a fucking... soccer player for Arsenal. He has always been really, really handsome. I don't know if you want to look him up, but for... Does like, he have the... the automatic soccer player undercut haircut? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but he was hot. He was like pretty boy hot for a number of years. And then about a year or two ago, he decided that he was going to grow a beard. <gasps> and he grew like the most perfect beard and it transitioned him into rugged hot and he is oh i don't like that beard it elongates his face too much he needs the beard he needs the beard to go out a little more he makes it look like like he just stretched his face and then painted the bottom he doesn't have good enough he doesn't have good enough skin for me i'm looking him up right now yeah he his skin is uh is a little rough like you can tell that he had some bad acne at one point but it's not bad enough to uh to ruin him I think that he still pulls it off, especially with the beard. Now he's got like rugged skin and the be- and the beard. You know what he is? He's the Joe Mangello of soccer. Yeah, that's a pretty good call. And I would say that you undersold his haircut. I think that his his haircut is a lot better than the typical fucking like it is. It like, is tight on the sides, yeah, but it's it it's not the fucking every fucking soccer player looks like Macklemore thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, Speaking of which, Macklemore on the AMAs the other day looked quite good. I've been Ugh. I haven't needed Macklemore for a long ass time, but I was like, you know what? That looks pretty good right now. Uh do either of you watch This Is Us? Mm-mm. I don't like I to cry. Hear people talk about you it. Don't every like to, you don't like to cry? Yeah, I've heard it's a big cry show and at night I like to watch stuff that makes me happy. Yeah. Okay. Um but there is a uh, a trio of handsome gentlemen in that show and I wanted to get you to rank them. Okay. Uh, it's Milo Ven- Venemila. I don't know how you say his na- last name. Uh, Milo, Sterling K. Brown, and Justin Hartley. Justin Hartley is the guy from uh, from Bad Mom's Christmas who plays the stripper. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that guy I don't need. I thought I think that, that Justin Hartley is the second hottest guy in Bad Mom's Christmas. I think that her boyfriend in Bad Mom's is he, just he quite good. Me. Ooh, I love this. I'm loving this fucking Milo guy. Yeah, Milo is very, very handsome. He looks like a combination of Jason Schwartzman and Lars Ulrich, and I find either of those guys hot, but for some reason when you combine them, it's delicious. <laughs> uh, Milo is uh, also a very younger person on Gilmore Girls. Ooh. Uh, but now he, he's he got, like, the look that he can... Oh, I'm obsessed look. with this guy. <laughs> so he's a chillin' hall. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like he's got good. He looks good with facial hair. He looks good, clean cut. He has good hair. Uh, he's got it going on. I he would really hate does. to be this fucking guy because he looks good with every. This guy can. I defy this guy. I challenge him to hot tub affect himself because I don't think you can. I'm Dude, going with Sterling we, Brown there. He's got Sterling good traps. K- he at is in right really, now. really good shape. He looks smart and he's in shape. What a, what he looks like he takes care of himself. He's yes, he plays the uh, the older gentleman that tries to get what's her name. Oh, Molly. Molly. He's yes. trying to date Molly, and he's like a doctor and and like really successful, and she's just not into it for some. Speaking reason. of uh, insecure, chap, you watch Insecure? Uh, no, I don't watch a whole lot of TV, honestly. Ooh. Uh, well, Insecure is a terrific show, it is. but the issue is. Every they don't have a single ugly guy on it, so it's a very distracting show because just between how goddamn handsome they are and like especially uh, Jay Ellis's character Lawrence wears really cool shirts all the time, so you like I'm I can never fucking follow the plot because I'm just fucking drooling the entire time. But um, the guy who plays Dro, the guy that Molly does get with when Sterling K Brown might be the better option. I think that he. I, he gets a lot of comparisons to O'Shea Jackson Jr. Yeah. And unfortunately, I love O'Shea Jackson Jr. The guy who plays Dro, his name is uh, Elon Noel, blows him the fuck out no, of the wall. Oh, no, Ru- that's Sarunas Jackson. 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 Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Elon Noel's the other guy. Elon no- Noel is uh, Daniel, who's also really yeah. hot. Uh, but uh, Sarunas J. Jackson, his eyes just fucking sent him to another planet. He's the kind of guy that looks like he's wearing mascara. Hmm. 
No, oh, he's not. He like, I don't trust that Derek Carr isn't no. wearing mascara. Or no, not not mascara. Eyeliner. He looks like he's wearing oh, yeah. eyeliner. Yeah. A great makeup guy over here. Uh, but no, I have him on my list. I think that he is really, really attractive. Saru Shea Jackson? Yeah. yeah, he's a fucking babe and a half. What about Alexander Skarsgård? Um, we've discussed him, and I think that we both think a little overrated. Yeah, I think he's overrated. I feel like his um, Tom Hiddleston big, also. Big Little Lies brought him down because nobody wants to see domestic abuse on camera. Right. Yeah, he was a monster on that show. Yeah. Just a monster. complete monster. Like, the twist of that was, like, oh, man, we think that this guy's abusing this woman. Twist. He abuses every woman. Yes. <laughs> just, like, every woman that he comes in, in contact with. Just very, very abusive. Well, he had that tennis racket coming. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> he also had a gigantic wiener on yeah. that show. Just, like, down um, shout out to him for that wiener, yeah. Uh <laughs> Tom Hiddleston, I think, is also overrated. I want to talk about him as an overrated guy. Also, he's way older than I thought. Tom Hiddleston? Yeah. Was he? Is he in his 40s? He's 35. Okay. I thought that he was, like, my age. So he's like younger that. than I thought. I thought really? I he could be in his early 40s. I think that ta- dating Taylor Swift is kind of a, a childish thing. I think that's kind of a young man's game. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I guess, I know that she's dated older guys, but I think that it's just established now that, like, bad shit happens to you if you date Taylor Swift. So... I thought that an older gentleman would know better. Even even with Taylor Swift's reputation, she has a real murderer's row of guys. Oh that she's God, dated. yeah. Like she has Mayer on that list. Mm-hmm. She has uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Calvin Tom Harris. Wilson, a lot of people Calvin don't like Harris. Calvin Harris. I think that he's he's, pretty, he's an attractive dude. Yeah. Uh, I also I have written down uh, Diplo looks like the biggest dick in the world, but I can't resist them. Interesting. So. I mean, girls have that problem all the time. They just they just can't resist the you, biggest assholes. Do you remember when we were we were in, one of the times we were in Chicago? Diplo. It was after Lollapalooza. Uh, there, Diplo was DJing at a club, yes. and we went to check tickets. Girls were free, and guy and tickets for males were like a thousand dollars. No, it was just it's an all girl show. Males were just legitimately not allowed. No, they they were. Really? You know, girls were admitted for free. Guys had to get tickets. And the tickets were seriously like three hundred dollars. <laughs> we did Dude, not go. Such a douche. Yeah. Uh, How do you guys feel about one, Jason? one of the guys that go ahead? Jason Statham? Ooh. Uh he doesn't really do it for me. He's 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 dangerous though. He's He is dangerous, but he's bald there's not enough like there's not enough to distinguish jason statham for like from like any other bald action star. also i want emotionally dangerous i don't want physically dangerous like i want um so like the, the first one the first uh hot guys and weathermen other john misty was one of mine which is awkward because now we're very good friends and now it's like he knows that that i've got feelings and all that shit but uh i like like I think that he's dangerous, and that you don't know what the fuck's going on in that brain. Jason Statham, I think that there's a good chance there's gonna be fire all the time, and I don't, I'm not just not trying to be around that much fire. Like you could go on a date with Jason Statham and end up in the trunk of his car. Yeah, right. Like I don't want that kind of danger. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I want like I'm gonna be eating a box of cookies and drinking a bottle of whiskey by myself at the end of the night. Dangerous. <laughs> so me, <laughs> What's that? That's basically me. Yeah. Yeah, so DJ wants to date chaps, so that's what we've we've established right. here. Uh, one of the guys that you brought up earlier in the week, I don't know if you wanted to bring this up on your own, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, Army Hammer. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I think that there's a lot of discussion that can circle around Army Hammer because um, Army Hammer, I think he's too – he's like almost sexually typecast for me. He always plays – uh, handsome, like he just plays the eye candy. Well, kind of, but like in um, in fucking the Social Network, yeah. he's such a he's always like whining about something. And I think that, like, I find insecurity unattractive. I know it's normal, but I find it unattractive. Like, it's so, like for me, I I'm happy that I'm not insecure because I know that I'm just fucked. <laughs> so. But when I see it in, like, like Army Hammer in Social Network, I think it just kind of it ruins it for me. He Well, he does play, like, a kind of a whiny crybaby in yeah. almost everything that he's casting. He's like I, fucking Caillou. I don't know why that's, why that's <laughs> the case. Like, I, I, he, I feel like he's gotten a shot uh, as being, like, a leading man. Ha- he, has he? Yeah, like, he was in that movie with, uh, where he was, like, the cowboy or whatever it was with Johnny Depp, I think it was. 
Ooh, um, tell me more about this movie. I don't think it went well. I think it was received very poorly, and then he just hasn't gotten a shot since. Sounds like my kind of movie. But though. now he's being talked about as a possible uh, Batman replacement. Really? Which, yeah, mm. I would be there for that. Uh, a lot of Batman stuff in the news. Got to say, I don't really care about it. <laughs> I, I care about it, but it's it's tough to care now because Batman. There's is too many kidding. super movies, man. Movies. There's like one yes, every yes. week. Yeah. Dude. Like, there's nothing that's must see because if you miss this one, there's going to be one in like a week and a half. Well, that and it's also like they they all tie in together. So if you miss one of them, you're going to miss like future references and and anyone that you want to see coming up. So if you, I feel like I've fallen behind so much to the point where it's not even worth it for me at this. Well, point. like my childhood, there's like four Batman movies. You can name them all. There's no chance in hell you can name all these. It was like the Olympics. Olympics. No way. Yeah. You had you had to wait like every four years for a new Batman movie right. or whatever. And a lot of times. I mean, they'd unveil this great, amazing cast, and I think it was once it switched to Batman Forever. I think that was one of those jobs where it was like, wasn't there a Batman two years ago? This is going a little quicker, and then from there, there's just been a Batman movie every month. But I mean, well, I mean, like, I feel like there was still a little bit of special specialness when Christopher Nolan was doing it because uh, he wasn't mixing it in with the other universes or whatever. I do feel like you need at least like three years in between these superhero movies because i feel like a big appeal of the superhero movie is that you don't get to see them very often so when you when they actually do come out with one it's special hmm. like it's it's a big event yeah, like star it's wars. not an event like anymore. star wars is now yes yeah you're right exactly like if you see darth vader come on the screen every year it's the it kind of takes away the Waters shine it down yeah, yeah exactly um how about Taron Egger, how do you say his last name? Egerton? Yeah. Um, I think that uh, I th- he is unbelievable. I think that he's a very handsome boy, but it's I don't know if this is a but or not. All of his appeal is his smugness. Like yeah, he he has a resting smug face, and part of me is like, what are you so smug about? But he just like looks back at me and he's like, you know what I'm smug about? And I'm like, okay, deal. Not a fan. You might also know no. him from. I know that you've got uh, you got little ones. You might also know uh, him from Sing. Yeah, I'm I'm familiar with Sing. I don't think this guy's all that. He's the gorilla boy, not... and he played. I'm still standing at the end, and he's okay in it. But I don't know. Oh yeah, I I don't agree with this one, fellas. He's got a very strong jawline. Uh, very smug. Great. He's smile. probably just too, he's probably just too young for me, honestly. He just looks really young. When he wears those big glasses. Oh, no. Like, even when he's a, a punk, I got this picture of him where he's a punk in the first Kingsman. And f- giddy up, man. <laughs> Cowabunga. Yeah, he, he can, like, he can pull off multiple styles. I think that's important. Uh, also, on the topic of the Kingsman, I think Pedro Pascal is a yeah. really good looking yeah. dude. Yeah. And he can, he's versatile, too. Right. He's, he's great in uh, Narcos. Um, awesome in Game of Thrones. He's basically the he's like the new uh, Eric uh, Eric Bana. Is that his name? That, that's a weird comparison. Eric Bana was the guy who played like the Hulk. Uh, I don't know if he played the Hulk, but he's in uh, Munich and he's in a gambling movie. But I always thought that Eric Bana could kind of play any sort of character, and I would trust it. He could be a good guy, bad guy, tall guy, sad guy. Do you guys watch Million Dollar Listing? No. Is that an HGTV thing? Uh, no, it's um Bravo thing. But the dude on there, look him up. Eric, or Frederick Eklund. It's E-C-L-U-N-D. He's like the main dude. He used to be like a gay porn star from Norway or some shit like that. Switzerland, maybe. And he he's like legit the hottest dude on TV. Oh, absolutely not. You don't like that guy? Oh, no oh, way. Absolutely not. This no guy way. is not attractive at all. Oh, wow. You think that he is the hottest guy on TV? He looks He's like one of. You don't think so? Oh, absolutely not. He looks like if you made a middle schooler an adult and then never changed anything about their middle school <laughs> face. Like, look at his fucking grin. I hate that smile. Oh, man. I look up i've lost a lot i've lost a lot of respect Dude, after this that guy's take. cheeks are <laughs> out of guy, control yeah I, I hate this guy wow so 
<laughs> well, what about the other dude that's on there? Steve Gold. Look up Steve Gold. Do you know Steve Gold? It's got to be an upgrade. Let's see. <laughs> it can't be worse than you just gave us. Oh, Steve Gold. Ah, no, Steve, Steve looks Gold kinda, is, uh, Steve is Gold looks looking. a little too much like me, quite frankly. I'm he gonna... looks like Jon Snow. You don't watch He's John Yeah, people tell yeah. people say that people tell me that I look like Jon Snow, and okay. then I look it up, and I'm like, "Fuck Jon Snow." Uh, if while we're on Jon Snow, I think he's kind of overrated. I think so. Yeah, like people love him for his character more than uh, like Kit Harrington. I don't think is knocking anybody's panties off mm. if he wasn't Jon Snow. Not you know what? Uh, Steve Gold is is uh, growing on me. As I scroll down, I'm still a little shook. He's by doing some you things that I could never. Other fucking schmo on us <laughs> as the hottest guy on TV. That is a wild proclamation. I think he's pretty hot. <laughs> that is wild. Uh, do we take Mario Lopez seriously no, as a hot guy? Because we're all just sick of him. I, I mean, like he is for sure an attractive guy, but he's Unbelievable so fake to me. That... I wish I had those jeans. Uh, absolutely. I mean, he looks just as good now as he did 20 oh, years ago. But you know ago. what? I just saw a picture. I Googled Mario Lopez, and one of the first pictures is him on the beach, quite frankly, with his shirt off for some reason. It feels like I'm not supposed to be looking at that. But he's He's been in impeccable shape forever, and it, just makes, me, it makes me angry. And he came to San Antonio, and it was a big thing on the radio. There's this new, like, five-star restaurant that opened up, and it was, like, sold out for weeks at a time which doesn't happen in San Antonio. And so he was here on like business and he called the restaurant. He's like, Hey, if you guys let me get a table and eat for free, then I'll use my Instagram account and say that I'm eating here to give you some publicity. And the, the chef just basically told him to go fuck himself. It's like, dude, you're Mario. That's, oh, oh, that's awesome. That sucks so much, but also my he, like, goal. Screen, the chef like life. screenshotted the message that he sent him on Instagram and was oh, like, yeah, oh, fuck yourself. So that. All I, the only reason I think I'm even in my line of work is because I fear that if I ever go bald, I want to get a free uh, hair <laughs> thing. And then you do the, because I don't know if it's like this in Texas, but in Boston, if there's a fucking problem with your hair at all, there's like 10 fucking hair transplant doctors that are lined up that are like, yo, we'll do it for you. And all you got to do is say that I'm your hair doctor. So that's the only fucking reason I'm in this line of work is because if I need a hair thing, I want to be able to get it for free. I asked Erica this week when we were in Vegas. I'm like, hey, can you hook me up with Dave's person? Because my hair is starting to go a little south. And she was like, I don't think you need to do it. I was is like, it really? I Dude, it's nuts how different and how much better Dave's, Dave looks. Yeah. It, it really, Same. he really has reversed the bus. And well, he, the did the right, he did the right too, thing. Like by losing a lot of weight. He lost a lot of ton of weight, too. Right. That's the thing. You've got to do it twice. Like, when I, uh, so I only have one tattoo, and I got it on my forearm. And I made sure that when I got the tattoo, I was also kind of in shape. So it, it's, you got, there needs to be, like, a, a sneaky double unveil where it's, ooh, Look at this thing. And also, just overall, you look terrific. That's what you got. I also did that one time. I had long hair. I cut it for a wedding, and then I wore suspenders at the wedding, too. You know, you know what I just realized? That Dave followed the uh, the Tom Brady blueprint. Hmm. He was that like, does not surprise me. He, he, was, he was, like, kind of out of shape. Uh, he, he slimmed down, like, lost some fat in his face. He grew a beard, and then he got a hair transplant and dressed better. And he just immediately became way better looking. Millions of dollars always helps. We were saying that, yes, yeah. that does. We were saying that if you, um, if you say that you made something up, you sound like an asshole. But if you say, "Look how good I look," no one seems to say like, "Oh, what an asshole." Like they're legitimately happy for you. Well, if... I I get angry at the people that pretend that they don't look good or find like an. Like oh yeah, we've talked about this on Instagram. We, we, we talk about like, like the Instagram behaviors of people who, who know that they're good looking but refuse to admit it. So they'll just like post a picture and then have the dumbest caption in the world just mm -hmm. to justify why they posted the picture. I'd rather have somebody just post a picture and be like, "Look how great I look." Yeah, yeah. one of my captions was, <laughs> "Yeah." <laughs> yes. I had a friend in town, and we had like a we took a picture together, and it was this great picture. And I put it up, and it was a good picture because all of our friends were in there, and it was, like, a lot of us reuniting and everything. And I posted it, and then, like, one minute later, I realized there was another picture taken from that night that uh, – I don't post too many things on Instagram, so I, I'll never post, like, three or four things in a day or whatever. But 
I saw there was another picture from that night where I just fucking happened to look great. So I posted that one as well with, uh, should have posted this. I had it going on yesterday. <laughs> and there nobody was like brag much or whatever. They were like, yes. You like people, like, Good uh, call. they embrace the honesty in, in situations like that. Yeah. Um, do we have any guys that we want to talk about being possible weathermen? Because, so do you, do you uh, have an understanding of the term weatherman? I don't. Okay. Uh, on the first edition of this uh, of this special that we did, Colin Jost was brought up, and we decided that he was a weatherman because uh, people think that he's attractive, but it's really because he has a nice haircut and he dresses well. Yes. And it just basically inflates everybody's opinion of him. Right. That could so, be the guy that – that might any- be the reason why the dude from Million Dollar Listening sticks out because he's got a great fuck haircut and he dresses crazy good i don't th- that guy's fucking, you guys i don't, don't see anything know. but cheats when i look the at that look guy. of judgment in your eyes is a little too much for me right now i'm gonna say that it, this guy like doesn't even qualify for weatherman for me because mm. the suit and the haircut isn't even doing it for me oh, it's unbelievable <laughs> it's not it's uh, um i i'm trying to think of a guy who would be uh, like, I would say that Tom Hiddleston would be a weatherman. Eddie Redmayne, I can't say because I think that a lot of people, I think that Eddie Redmayne is a legitimate toss up in his own right. Like, people would be justified in saying definitely, people would be justified in saying not at all. But it's not, like, Colin Jost is kind of on the line. I don't begrudge anyone who's like, yeah, he's okay. But if they're like, I'm like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Right. I gotta toss you out. Um, I think in that category, I don't know if I said this on one of the previous episodes, but like Ryan Seacrest is, I believe, a weatherman. Uh, I Ryan think, Lochte, I think, is. I think Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, Ooh. that's. I don't think Leo. Don't you fix your. I don't think Leonardo DiCaprio is that attractive on his own. Like if he's if he's dressed in sweatpants and stuff, and you don't know that's Leo, he doesn't bat my eyes if I'm going. I think that you drive-thru. gotta ask your mom permission to go see Leonardo DiCaprio at the mall because those eyes are piercing. <laughs> uh, I kind of like side with Chaps here because, he, I mean, he's a product of when he does himself up, he looks great, but there's nothing overly spectacular about Leonardo DiCaprio, I don't think. I think that you've got to ask your mom permission to go see Leonardo DiCaprio at the mall because his eyes are piercing. Ah. <sighs> I don't know. It's he's got like a fat so. face. He's got a fattish face. Yeah, he's um, not great. Yeah, I'm kind of. Uh, he was for sure a uh, an attractive younger gentleman, but he. he oh, see, not... I think that he's gotten better. Really? I, th- no, I don't think no, he's no. aged particularly. I think well. that he's a good, shitty looking man. I think like right now he's, uh, like I'm, I'm looking at this picture 20, of him. Twenty five to thirty, Leo, great. Forty year old Leo, is yeah. like clearly that he's been boozing for like twenty years. Oh, God, fucking, like, oh, man, leave leave it in for, like, a month because those eyes are piercing. Oh, my God, that's the only thing that you can say. And they're not even that piercing. They're, like, not that great. He has like, great, Mc, he has Mc, great Mc, eyes. If you said that about McDreamy, I'd be like, yeah, McDreamy I will say, eyes. I don't know who his makeup person is. So when I go in, uh, so... For work, uh, now I do makeup. I didn't used to do makeup, and now I do makeup. And God, I don't know what the fuck I was doing without makeup. It's terrific. Because you watch them. It's like ironing. It's just uh, you're bringing order to chaos. And I see as they do it, the fucking shit under my eyes just goes away. And suddenly it looks terrific. So now whenever I see a celebrity with shit under their eyes, like Leo in a lot of these pictures, I'm like, who the fuck is doing your makeup, dude? It's not... You see what I'm saying? The shit that he's got under his eyes? You know who Leonardo DiCaprio kind of looks like? I thought his eyes were piercing. Why are you distracted by the bullshit? They are, him? but it's the shit. I, I, I accidentally took a dip and looked a little below. <laughs> and <laughs> I let my eyes wander. Yeah. And eyes up here, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Eyes up here. Eyes up here. So look at the shit below. Focus on the iris, not the lids. Um, who Leonardo DiCaprio kind of looked like? Blake Shelton. Get the fuck out of here. Look at Blake Shelton and look at Leonardo DiCaprio. They're like, have a, they have similar features. The beady uh, eyes kind and, of thing. Yeah, and like the, the round face with the, uh, the kind of shitty facial hair. So 
Blake Shelton is a bad-looking, shitty man. Leonardo DiCaprio is a great-looking, shitty man. Like, they could be brothers, and you'd be like, oh, Leonardo DiCaprio got the better end of the stick there. Although, now I'm fucking mad because now I'm just distracted by the shit under his eyes. Mm -hmm. Every picture, he's... It's bad, dude. What's yeah, going on? That wasn't there when he was 25. So he was like 25, 30 year old. He was like a perfect looking dude. Now but not so much. Under, the shit under your eyes suggests you know how to party. Leonardo DiCaprio is basically you know, Philip Rivers. Like he's just riding on like five or ten years, like five years ago, his fame, and he's not doing it right now. <laughs> so uh, you're saying that to the picks. wrong person because Philip Rivers is my fucking god, best quarterback in the 2004 draft class, Eli Trash. <laughs> uh, weatherman. JP Lossman also trash, but he legitimately. Weatherman, uh, Luke Bryan. Oh, well, I'm down for anything that's shitting on Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan is uh, 100% a weatherman. And he gets way too he gets way too much credit. I don't know if it's because there aren't enough. That's not true because there are a lot of like sexy country stars. Luke Bryan is not up there anymore. Luke anymore? He's just never really been up fuck there. Fuck that guy. What do you think of Luke Bryan, chaps? Not a fan. I'm out on Luke Bryan. Oh, we, you know what we think of Luke Bryan? We think that when he messes something up, he says, "I'm such a doofus." Because yeah. you could just tell. Like a Taylor Swift where you're not a doofus, you're a multimillionaire and like a successful singer, but you want everybody to think you're just one of us. You're not one of us, dude. Yeah, because yeah. we're not fucking doofuses. Uh, while we're on country stars, Sam Hunt. What do you think about Sam Hunt? Uh, I think that he used to play college football. People forget that. Yes. Very handsome. That's I think he's very true. handsome. Yeah. Uh, let me look at Sam. Hunter yeah, he quick. he uh, he had a bad haircut for a little while. He like he went with that undercut look, and he didn't much really work. He's, for mu him. he's he much better it. in a hat. He's a hat he's much better in a hat, and he's yes, hat and beard for sure. Yeah, I, I love the I love the beard. He looks like such an asshole though. Yeah, he does. He looks but like his the long fucking beard's not team. great. When he has like a long beard, it's when he has like three day stubble that he's the best. Scruff. Yeah. Yeah. You know who I think is unbelievable, and we've never talked about him for some reason? Uh, he's just got great fucking lips and everything. Orlando Bloom. Mm. I think he's overrated. I mean, he was like a – he was – He was hot, hot shit, shit because of day, uh, Pirates of the, of the Caribbean. But I just – I saw him in um, fucking uh, Easy. And he, I didn't know who he was. I was like, who is this man? I mean, he's for sure attractive. I think that he uh... – I do love the uh, the the facial hair look with like the uh, the mustache and yeah then just the V for the... Vendetta look. Yes, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's an awesome look. Yeah, and uh, there are a few people, that especially can pull that if off. you give it a little something on the end. Yes, if you let it go just a little long, hmm. like it. Uh, who, uh, let's see, who else do I have on here? Oh, uh, here's a toss up. Who's the hotter Wilson brother, Owen or Luke? Luke. That's a question straight out of 2002. Uh, hmm. Owen Wilson's biggest flaw that everybody points out is, is that he nose. says wow too much. No, his no. nose is the most fucked up nose I've ever seen. Yeah, but nose as a, as a guy with a nose, I think that nose, it's a strength. The second you seem like you're worried about your nose, problem for everyone else. But if you're like, yeah, I got this nose, baby, then... Uh, suddenly it's like no one else got that nose yeah i think uh honestly out of that that twosome i would take luke wilson i mean um owen wilson yeah i think i go owen by a mile i think well yeah now I just, i'm looking at some more recent thick pictures luke looks like he eats way too much salt he's just like really swollen looking <laughs> oh really oh, I don't yeah this, i haven't seen luke wilson in a while looking at but real blood I, he, he needs to stop his, he needs to his stop his eating, wikipedia like, page yeah, that's the his, picture uh, I'm looking at. Wikipedia <laughs> yeah, he looks yeah. terrible in that picture. Yeah, oh, no! Bad. Doesn't he look like he ate like a bad way too angle, much salt? But... <laughs> yes. He looks like fucking Mark Cuban, but uh, a, a bad Mark Cuban. He either looks like he eats way too much salt or he drinks way too much. And probably Oh, both. there's another one. Uh, dude, check out his famous birthday. Oh, man, he does not look good. Oh, but for some reason, when I Googled uh, Luke Wilson, a picture of David Harbour came up, and we'd be remiss oh, if man. we we actually – so we couldn't make it happen, but we wanted to have David Harbour on Monday to interview him just about his body and how everyone loves his body now. <laughs> but it couldn't. we couldn't make it happen. Uh, you know, we can't say why. Before we move on, I, a I big, just want to say – uh, I saw it on like a split screen. 
a dude who's taken a big tumble, David Arquette. Goodness gracious. He just took a big stumble. Like he went from like probably being like a six. He's probably like a two now. You know, David Arquette and, and Luke Wilson could be like the same person. Actually, there's a picture of them next to each other. That's where I saw it. Yeah. When, uh, it, when I Googled like David Arquette. Sense. Yeah. Ugh. He looks terrible. Uh, but I think Luke Wilson has a, such a strong jawline that it's almost too strong. Mm. It looks like it, it protrudes too much out of his neck. Can uh, I uh, can I say something about David Arquette? I think that he's a victim of the times. I think that he his features could only play in the 90s, and that's why they did. Mm. I think that um, he he his hair doesn't look good. A lot of shit in it, but when he's got that kind of 90s thing where it looks like he took both of his hands, put them behind his head, and then went boom, and pushed forward, and then that's his hair. That looked that played in the 90s, but you can't do that right now. So he's trying to do other shit to make up for it. And I've, there's pictures of him with long hair. There's pictures of him with his hair slicked back, and it all looks bad. I think that he's a victim of the times. He's got a really weird face. I don't know what it is. I think I feel like all his features are squished too close together. Yeah, he looks like face. he was born to be poor, but he like got out of it somehow. <laughs> But he fucking rose up the ranks, man. Uh, my last person that I wanted to for sure bring up was Cillian Murphy. Ah, we've discussed him. Have we? Yeah. He is. I am in on Cillian Murphy. I don't know if I... No. I think I might have changed my stance. I think a couple of years ago, maybe I was on the fence. I'm in on him now. He's I think so that he's, weird looking yeah. that, it's almost, that it's attractive. But then... He looks like the guy who was in the mask. You remember the villain in the mask? Oh, yeah. Uh... Fuck they the mask. Uh, what was that thing that uh, Jim Carrey says about the? Uh, he has some sort of Italian food, and then what does he say about it? It's like a something about a meatball. A spicy meatball. A spicy you... meatball. Oh, we got him to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that somehow we could get chaps to organically say that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> Just really worked that's it in organically. That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, so great. Ah, uh, fuck. That's cool. Like you, you, you kind of have a catchphrase. I know that your actual catchphrase is actually good, but or actually bad. Actually, yeah. Mm. But uh, I'm a glass half good guy. Glass uh, half. Good. Glass half good guy. <laughs> um, but shit. Like if I saw you on the streets, I would be like, "Hey, could you say that's a spicy meat the ball?" And then when you said it, I would do. I would react exactly the way that I just reacted because, in my truth, I just really wanted to hear that. And I don't even know where that came from. I, there was just some blog that I felt like it needed to be in there that I wrote. Look up Peter Green and then the dude that you just said. Like, they could be – that could be like mom and dad. Peter Green with an E on the end. That's the villain from Mask. Peter. It looks like that dude aged 20 years. Oh, my God. I thought God. you meant like that Peter Green from Fleetwood correct. Mac. And I was – That could absolutely be a father and son. But that guy, uh, gone in 60 seconds guy. Yeah, and he's the but one that played he the is villain way the uglier. Game. Yeah, but it, he is it could be related. Is he in Blue sure. Streak? Yeah, they could absolutely be related. Is he also in Blue Streak? Or do I just assume? I think that there's like a, a very small group of uh, like white bad guys with long faces. And I think that like that was a type for movies for a long time. We're like, we need a bad guy. Let's get a white guy. You with have a long to have face. a dude that has like a handsome structure face to like piercing ice blue eyes. Like the dude is right, and you're Gladiator, like... like the guy in Gladiator. Mm. Yeah, uh, Peter Green looks like somebody left Cillian Murphy in the microwave for a little too long. Yes. The... He just looks like a melted version of Cillian Murphy. He also, Peter Green, uh, looks like he would be, like if they were making a movie about the Nazis, Peter Green would be the first guy that they cast. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do we think of Oscar Isaac? Oscar Isaac, is he in Gone in 60 Seconds? No, he's... Oh, uh, no, he's the, uh, the Star Wars Davis. guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is unbelievable. Yeah. He really does. He And he he pull off any look. Like, he's got great hair, great facial hair. Yeah, he definitely he falls into that category of... Could play anything. He uh he kills the salt and pepper look. Hmm. He was, is unbelievable. Was he in... Uh, I, I could be making this up. Was he one of the people that uh, could have possibly potentially played Freddie Mercury? Uh, I think so, yeah. Ooh. I think he was in the running. And he would have murdered that shit. He would be a great 
Freddie Mercury. Since we brought up Freddie Mercury, what do we think of Rami Malek? Oh, is he the he's Mr. Mercury. Computer guy? Yes. I don't like him. Don't like his eyes. And I know it's because he's got a lazy eye, but I'm allowed to say I don't like his eyes. I don't think he has a lazy eye. I think he's got he, something going on. He has like vagina eyes. His, he's got like the same. Uh, he's got like the Steve maybe that's Bush, why I don't Steve like Buscemi him. eyes, Gross. where he's got like the very pronounced shit under the under, eyes, under eyelid. Thing. Yeah, it looks like he has two eyelids, one above and one below. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, again, fucking fleece that out with makeup, dude. That's I don't think. Wrong. I think his is so strong that you can't. Who's your biggest riser for handsomeness in the last five years? Ooh. Oh man. I think Idris Elba. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. Um, I would say, I honestly would say, uh, I think Michael B. Jordan. Mm. Yeah, mine's, I think Michael B. Jordan. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Ooh, Chris Pratt is too. I can't commit to Chris Pratt because you never know what you're gonna get. Well, now you do because he's full on movie star and he's single, mm. so you know that he's gonna stay in shape. Yeah, but I don't like that. I think but you I know think he's he so for funny, sure. and so handsome, and Ryan Reynolds. My God, dude, Ryan, I, Ryan Reynolds. The sex man of the year every year for like the next decade. Yeah, I mean, but he's not a riser because he was no, not a riser at all. Very high. Got to mention him. I haven't mentioned him yet, and that's outrageous. For me, I think Chris Pratt is a uh, is a somewhat dangerous pick because I feel like he could uh, he could trend downwards very soon. Uh, But right now, where he's at, he doesn't seem like he's built for. Right, I absolutely agree that he is very attractive right now, but I feel like he's not built for longevity. That's fair. Like, he, you know that, remember, did you watch The Price is Right growing up? You know the little dude who's like the yodeler that goes into the mountain is like, yodel, yodel, like when they're going up and they're no. like, going to go up the price thing. I feel like that's Chris Pratt, and he's like three quarters of his mountain, and he's got like probably four or five years left until he takes a tumble off the mountain. That's a great fucking song, too. I love it. Love shit. Modeling is as big as it should be. That's why uh, up on Crip Creek by the band song where they're just like, all right, now let's let's lo- yodel. I'm a big fan a of minute. people who can whistle their asses off too. If you're a good whistler, Ooh. I'll listen to I, that. I love uh, when people work in whistles into songs. Yeah, that's a good move. Uh, yeah. Great whistle, uh, "The Stranger" by Billy Joel. Okay. Mm-hmm. Beginning of that, there's a very jazzy kind of smoky intro. It's first he plays it with the right hand on the piano, and then he just whistles over it. And there's like a lot of reverb, so it seems like it's like, ooh, this is a very sleazy kind of situation <laughs> I'm in right now. And it's great. Uh, any final takes? Uh, no, I wrote down. Um, I mean, I I guess we didn't spend a lot of time on it, but I can't stress enough how hot Jay Ellis is. Jay Ellis is amazing. I think. I think he might be the most attractive black man in Hollywood. Uh, it's, it's it's a real murderer's row with like him, uh, Michael B. Jordan, Idris Elba. Idris Elba. Um, I I want to put O'Shea Jackson Jr. in there. I think that he's top five. You think that O'Shea Jackson Jr. Yeah. is? I don't know. But I did say before we went into this, like, uh, like I think that, that most of the hottest guys in Hollywood right now are black. Mahershala Ali... Marshall Ali is fucking. He is, he's, he's like in his 40s, isn't he? I don't know what he is, but like that that guy's fucking face is he unbelievable. Is unbelievable. I, I agree with you. I think that that's a good percentage of the most attractive people in Hollywood right now are black. Yeah. Something about like he he's not traditionally handsome, but there's just something about him that it, it all works. He's 43, by the way. He just um yeah uh so who let's see do i have anything else written down um i wrote down charlie hunnam question mark um sons of anarchy Mm -hmm. uh yeah he's attractive for sure yeah he's fine i think that uh i for some reason he's always been not quite enough for me there's not a lot of hot blonde guys in hollywood uh charlie hunnam is in uh, the elite class of blondes. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's actually quite it. I, re- I really wanted to make sure that I got to uh, thinking Sean Mendez isn't hot, so that's funny that you'd I him think Sean Mendez is, uh, he is going to be an absolute 
heavyweight in about five years. I think that Sean Mendez is already in the Demi Lovato class for me, where I get annoyed when people start talking about how great they are because they're good, they're fine, but like Demi Lovato is not great. Everyone, calm the fuck down with Demi Lovato. But Sean yeah, Mendez, I, I think, I is has a. What that Demi Lovato is a little overrated. Demi Lovato, yeah, yeah, she's overrated, yeah. I, I, I mean, like she has stands. She is not good enough to be to have the right, yeah, exactly. Fan base that she has, yeah. There like, are people she's that like are the fifth most possible. She's Demi like Lovato. the fifth most followed person on Instagram. Really? I mean, yeah. she's gorgeous. So, like, if. I yeah, can give him credit for that. Yeah, like but we're talking about girls. We don't care about looks there. We're just talking about uh, fucking music. No, I know. Yeah. But like, if you're talking about Instagram, you have to incorporate looks into the equation hmm. because that's what people follow people on Instagram for most I, of the time. I'm going to toss out a, a quick girl on this podcast. Uh, Aya Cash. Who's that? Uh, she's, she's in Easy and she's in You're the Worst. She's uh, she's the pregnant wife during the in the uh, Dave Franco episode. Uh, she's a redhead. I'm I in. love her. She's, I love redheads. Mm, she's terrific. But this isn't about girls. No, this is about not. fellows as usual. Chaps, you got any left in the tank? I I mean, you got to be you got to mention Justin Timberlake because he's still the best in the game. Yeah, he's still like he's st- but he's also getting into the he's got to watch it because he's starting to get cute. And sir, sir, it's too soon for him to be sir. getting cute. It's too soon for him to be getting cute nice. because then, like, when I see him and Jimmy Fallon in the same room now, I'm not differentiating the two too much now. And I think that Jimmy Fallon can get the fuck out of my life. Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon is not in not the in same, the same conversation. Not even the same, but not even I'm saying like the same car on the train, like they're right. different. He's turning himself into a bit of a goofball. That's all I'm, all I'm saying is just watch out, no, Justin. My biggest, my biggest warning for Justin Timberlake is that uh, he is not in the spotlight enough. So I, I haven't seen him in a while. I'm sure he's very, very attractive. But if he like is only servicing a couple times a year. There's a possibility that in a couple of years you might see him and be like, "Oh, he kind of looks old now," mm. and you, d- you don't get the uh, you don't get the subtle transition. The into graceful older. fall. Yeah. Can I tell you this? Not about- a graceful fall, but like once somebody gets older, you you kind of get adjusted to their their aging process. But if you don't see somebody for a while and then you see him, you're like, "Oh, that guy looks way older." Can I? Oh, a big example for that would be, um, what's the dude from Michael Reisner? Right, Michael Reiser. He's in Stranger Things. Like, Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser. Oh, yeah. That dude. Like, I was like, that can't be Paul Reiser, man. No way. Paul uh, Reiser was uh, out of the spotlight for like 10 years, and then he came back. Looks like shit. I think that uh, I always say this in sports. I say the, the best thing that you can do isn't to beat your opponent. It's to make them quit. And that's why uh, <laughs> Darrell Revis was like, I think, is like the fucking best cornerback ever. Because... All he, like he would just but by fucking halftime, the other team's top receiver would just be fucking mailing it in because they're like, I'm not gonna fucking catch a pass the rest of this game anyway. And that's just such a that's such an impressive thing to do, and it's it helps your team so much. I think that Bruno Mars has kind of made Justin Timberlake quit. I think that Bruno Mars showed up and he was like, All right, I'm stepping on your oh, turf man. and we're gonna have a bit of a showdown here. And I think that Justin Timberlake was like, eh, I don't really need to do this anymore. Are we talking about looks or are we talking about music? I think that just with everything, I think that that's why Justin Timberlake maybe is in the spotlight. All accounts. I think it's wrong on all accounts. I don't think he's better at music. I don't think he's better at looks. Uh, I think Bruno enough. showed up with I, a lot of coke and was like, All right, let's party. And Justin think, was like, I'm gonna go home. I think Bruno eclipses Justin Timberlake in terms of music, uh, at this point. Right now, for sure. And uh Bruno Mars is a very good-looking person who does not credit for being as good-looking. He looks kind of like Dionne Warwick. Who's that? <laughs> Dionne Warwick? Yeah. That's fucking hilarious. Dionne Warwick, uh, she was one of the uh, people on That's What Friends Are For. She's on We Are The World. She's great. Look her up. Tell me she doesn't look like Bruno Mars. She oh, did. Yep, she does. <laughs> yeah. Is Dionne Warwick dead? I, rem- I think I may have been sad when she died. Uh, no, she's alive, so you just made that up. Hmm. Yeah, but, uh, God, she's... Justin Timberlake, I think, uh, I think you might be onto something about the music, because, uh, I think he realized that he is not the heavyweight that he thought he was. But he's like, I don't need to be anymore, and I'm like, I know that, like, you're right in doing that, but I think that's a bullshit move, Justin. 
the the 2020 uh, experiment was a mm. uh, at least half of it was a flop. No, I thought that they, I thought that it was all good. I thought the second half was was disappointing, and I uh, and I think that's kind of where he kind of dialed it back. No, I mean where he dialed it back was the fucking trolls song, the can't can't <laughs> well, stop the was... feeling. No one has ever fucking mailed it in in no. anything like he did with that fucking song, and it still was a smash hit. It was which a smash made me hit. So mad. I remember I was like. I need anybody but Justin Timberlake yeah, to like he's, he's set he's a bar. I need that. this to be sung by fucking uh who's Shawn the Mendes. who's the yeah, Sean Mendez, who are the fucking assholes that Taylor brought out when we saw the nineteen eighty nine tour? The so fucking like a two a, Walk the Moon. No, like so, something like yeah, like Walk the Moon can do that fucking song, but that's not who did it. Uh she brought out uh so, like one good BKO, song. something like that, NKO something. Something. Whatever. It, yeah. Not big enough to care. Yeah, it fucking pissed me off. Uh, all right. Well, this has been a smash success as usual. Uh, chaps, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, fellas. We will continue to read your wonderful blogs and, uh, and listen to them when your audio blogs. Yes. Mm. And watch your audio blogs. Uh, you need to bring back the audio blog. When was the last time you did it? Uh, it's probably been like a month. I just got kind of tight. Like it, it's a pain in the ass process because you have to do it like six seconds at a time. It takes forever. Man. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much. You you checked all the boxes for us. You had a great takes. You had a really crazy one about that guy with the cheeks. Yeah. Now I'm not gonna be able to fucking yeah. sleep because yeah. of that fucking weirdo. You for sure. Uh, you went there a couple times in terms of like mm, that was a take. You just came right out of the box, Ricky your face. Uh, that was that was a strong take. And then I'm still gonna I'm gonna be thinking about this uh, this Bravo guy for a long time. Me too, my friend. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, chaps. You, uh, we'll do the fucking plug. You can read them on Barstool Sports, listen to Zero Blog 30, the, uh, the Podfathers as well. Everything. Thanks, chaps. Thanks, fellas. Stay handsome. It is time to name Brunch's Handsomest Man of the Year 2017. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Uh, there's a lot of candidates, as we've discussed on this episode. Thank you to Chaps for joining us. Uh, we've got, before we get to the actual winner, we should get to the favorites. Because there yes. aren't necessarily nominees or anything like that, because everyone's kind of, every, like, even fucking Colin Jost is a nominee. He's not going to fucking win. Ricky Gervais nominee. Ricky Gervais, who knew? You know what? That was actually a good call on his part, because mm. that, no, the, his laugh thing was cute. The thing that I uh, played along with you guys, just to be nice, was Larry David. Larry David's fucking gross, man. Mm, Especially you say less you, gross than Ricky Gervais. You brought up his laugh as being attractive. I fucking his laugh this season for some reason. He's the laughing jaw? a lot more. Oh, and he's ah, like, ah, that's ah, not ah, fucking. I don't know what the hell that is. Gross, disgusting. All right. Anyway, though, the favorites for brunches, handsomest man of the year, 2017, are Idris Elba, Oscar Isaac, Jay Ellis, and Jeff Goldblum. Obviously, obviously. yes, of course. Obviously, Jeff Goldblum guy is sneaky attractive. And the winner is Emilio. Yay! Emilio is the winner. He's such a handsome man. He's such a handsome man. Oh, what would you like to say, Emilio? Oh. Riveting <laughs> stuff. Dream come true. You want to hold the handsome man? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, oh what a couple of handsome men. <laughs> Just a couple oh, of... Oh, yeah. Ooh, he's got a lot to say. Oh, yeah, good luck in here. What a good guy. Congratulations so much to you, my favorite. My love you, you handsome little guy. You're going to be the most handsome man until you die. That's right. That's the trick with being most handsome man. <laughs> you never get less handsome because you only get more handsome. So next year, you're going to win, too. So an early congratulations to 2018 handsomest man of the year if Trump doesn't kill us all. Emilio! Yay! Okay, that's it for Hot Guys and Weathermen 3, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you to Chaps. Thanks to Pete Blackburn. Thanks to DJ Bean. Everybody involved. We'll see you next year!